Hey friends, it is seed start and Saturday. It's Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern time. And here we are again. And I am still just doing the same things that we do every single week. And I'm kind of on a little mission these days. Um, that's what it takes to be a flower farmer is to just keep doing the same things over and over and over and over and over again. And I think that there's some foggy illusion for people to think of um, that it's not like that way, but that's a reality check. So what I'm doing with you guys here this morning is kind of what I do just about every day. I don't sow seeds every day, but happy that you're here and i'm realizing i just left my phone up there i've been making lots of videos with all of this beautiful harvest um, that i have behind me tons of just beautiful fall stuff um, that we had for our show yesterday inside of our phone app and anyway i got a little tied up and um, ran a little bit late welcome friends today for seed starting saturday i'll be sewing almost let's see what is today today's the 17th of september i'm still going to be doing sunflowers this week and next week next week will be my last sunflower sewing and i'll probably kick myself for not going a couple more weeks but i have added a couple of weeks beyond what i did in years previous um and then we had long falls meaning we didn't have our first freeze as predicted. And I could have had more sunflowers. So if you are just joining me here for the very first time, welcome. Um, my name is Lisa Mason Ziegler and the gardenersworkshop.com is who brings all of this to you. And um, we just love meeting you here on Saturday mornings. And I have some pretty fun stuff to show you. We have so many cool flower babies um, in the process. I mean, look at this. I have, have them in all sizes and shapes. And so we're going to look at some of those and talk about them. And before we jump into starting our sunflowers and looking at seedlings, I want to remind everybody that we are now having the offers that I give each week inside the Gardener's Workshop app. Um, they're staying good until Sunday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern time, meaning that you still have time to take advantage of them. And one of the things that was, um, you know, and the specials change from week to week. So I really don't want to talk about what they are because then people watch this later and it's a problem. But you can grab the phone app over in your phone's app store. Just search Gardner's Workshop Live Shop um, and you can go in there and watch the replay. Um, but there's, you can, we do... I'll just tell y'all and then we'll just deal with people seeing this later, right? So one of the things that we offer very often is free shipping on seed packet only orders. That means that if you only order seed packets, not cover crop seeds, seed packets, then I pay the shipping. And we do that. So when I show y'all all this gorgeousness each week, and that's what that show is all about, sharing the harvest, sharing the chores, what I'm doing on the farm, and then having the stuff that you can do it with and giving you the option to purchase it. And oftentimes there's really special offers. Free seed shipping is one seed packet shipping is one of those things. And so those offers are now being made available and open until Friday, Sunday mornings at 8 a.m. And I just wanted to be sure that everybody is aware of that. And um, the girls are actually now in charge of planning that show. Our phone app is a whole separate entity from our website. Like yesterday, we featured four new products that we're bringing in for holidays that are things that we sold for years when we did gardening shopping shows. Um, and we have limited quantities. So they're in there. You won't find those over on our website. So I just wanted to be sure that everybody's aware of that. And I'll tell you some of the cool things about the app. You can go in and go to a product and there's a video usually attached to it. And so you can watch additional information about that. So that's something that's really, really, um, I mean, we have struck such a chord with people, y'all, given that extra information. And we're just so grateful that everybody's joining up and um, downloading the app. And we just appreciate it all so much. 
So remember, you can head over to the gardenersworkshop.com anytime. If you sign up for our farm news, which is like a front page of a newspaper, um, you get it once a week and it just features all the stuff that's going on. Um, and we would love to have you join that. Um, and you'll find our podcast there. Our latest blog is there as well as how to's and just all kinds of great fun stuff. Um, and the thing that you can do most of all friends, if you're watching me on YouTube is to subscribe to my channel, um, comment, and we do our best to answer. Um, and if you're watching me on Facebook to like, and share it, all of those things make those platforms show us to more people. And that's what keeps fueling us to do more and more free content for you guys. And I see people are signing on. And if you see folks doing the little sunflower emoji, that means they're identifying themselves as our students. And we love it when people do that because I encourage anybody that's considering taking any of our big school courses or purchasing our on-demand courses to reach out to somebody that has that sunflower emoji and say, what did you think? Um, my course goes on sale October 1st, which is just in two weeks. It only goes on sale for five days. And y'all be hearing more about that because I'll be talking about so much of that. Um, there's just, it's, it's, I can't even start talking about that now, y'all. Anyway, reach out to our students, you know, word of mouth, and there's tons of reviews on our course pages. So just check those out. And thank you all so much for identifying yourself. Um, and I will circle back to the questions. Um, Jesse is not here today again to help me. So first off, I want to say everything you see me talk about and mention is available either on the app if you want to go over there and shop through the app because any offers are still good until tomorrow morning or it's always available over on our website but the offers that you see on the app are not available on the website i know that's kind of confusing but just think of the app is my special event spot and the events are only good for so long um, and so you can check all of those out and you'll find everything over there. So um, the first thing I want to say is, so yesterday's show, I showed Snapdragons. I have, I have so many Snapdragons y'all started. I mean, like probably like two or 3,000 and we really don't need that many. What's got, got to do with how many I start, right? And I showed them in baby just born stage growing up and then those that are big enough to be pinched and I pinched them um, and showed you where to make the cut. Um, so those are some of the things that I really love doing. But I brought over here one of the specials yesterday had free cool flower seeds with it. It's actually the soul blocking set. And so I had these seedlings out here in this room. And so I just thought I'd show you guys. So this is status. I also have a little status and a sweet William problem this year. I bet there's over a thousand status, different status colors started and sweet Williams. So this is status. And let's see how old this is. Can't read it. So that is August 15th. So these are four weeks old. And so these are ready to go to the garden. They will not get planted this week. They'll probably get planted next week, which what means is I'm slowing them down now. They can grow probably another inch. That means they will be a super hardy plant. Um, this is 60 plants on this little tray. These are all in the small block, which is what I start probably 99% of almost, almost all of my plants in. It, you know, what I start in the big block are sweet peas, um, oh my gosh, y'all have such a sweet pea problem this year. Anyway, um, sweet peas um, and stuff like zucchini, those things that have bigger seeds that won't fit in here. So these are almost ready to go to the garden. Um, this is one of the statuses, which is these are cool seeds and hardy annuals. And look at these guys. They're just coming along. This is um, Billy Balls, Craspedia, Golden Drumstick. And these are eight... 30. So these are what, 20 days old and a little slower grower. I mean, y'all plants really have different growth rates. Like um, Rudbeckia is always the first one we start every year for cool season for the fall because they're so slow to grow. We want a bigger plant to go to the garden. Um, and I'll just mint talk about that very briefly here. But Different plants have different rates and it depends on your conditions. And so you need to kind of figure that out for yourself. 
Um, but I prefer to have a little bit bigger transplant with for fall planting than I do any other time of the year. Because think about this, when I plant these fall planted cool season hardy annuals out in my garden, there we don't want them. We want to plant them when it's cool enough outside that they really don't do a lot of top growth. We're getting them in the ground so they can build a strong root system, right? So because they're not going to take off growing on the top, I want a little bit bigger transplant versus when I plant in very early spring, many of these guys again. Um, and then in summer, when you're planting all those warm season, you plant those transplants and they just boom, hit the ground running and start growing. This fall planting doesn't do that. So I personally like to have a little bit bigger transplant. Um, and so that's the story on that. And I don't know if y'all are aware, Cool Flowers is out of stock everywhere. I mean, our publisher had it reprinted like four times this year already. I mean, I'm so grateful for that, but I am not grateful that we're out of stock right now. Um, so I just want to give the heads up. If anybody doesn't have the book, A, a lot of libraries have it. There is Kindle. And I think there's even an ebook. I haven't really investigated that, but um, you can check that out. But there's a lot of resources on our website. You can go over to the gardenersworkshop.com, go to resources on the home page, it's across the top resources, go to the blog, go to the cool flower category. Um, and the very, I think it, it might not be the very first one. You can actually just go to the blog and there's a search within the blog, not the one at the top of the page and put in there um, chronicles because I did an article, I did a, a, stu a video study called the cool Fl season flower chronicles. And I have made that page in the blog, a clearinghouse of information. There are webinars there you can request. There's a planting guide. There is so much information and there's videos the Cool Flower Chronicles in itself is a group of five 30-minute videos that you can go through and watch that are addressing the most frequently asked questions that I have. So this is a great thing to do on a day that you just don't have anything to do right now or watch one a night or something. Um, friends, there's nobody's got more to do than I do right now. I'm working on a huge project and I just say Monday and Tuesdays and half a day Wednesdays, that's all I do. I mean, I get up and water, but that's what I don't, I put blinders on. You just have to do what you have to do to continue in your education and to meet the needs of your business. Um, so you can find those resources over there. And I'm going to circle back to the questions after we, um, I'm actually going to, sorry about that loud noise. Y'all will get rid of these ceilings. And I'm also going to grab my phone because it's not, I didn't put it on. Do not disturb and surely somebody will interrupt us here. All right. So first things first, we are going to sow our weekly sunflowers. So, you know, several weeks ago, I switched up that I am only plant, excuse me, planting the pro cut mix. That's a custom mix that you can, that we, I only find at the gardener's workshop. It's all of the pro cut colors. And I've done that because it has a lot of those bi colors um, I have them right here, not all of them, but some of them. And these are all old. These were a sample of some old ones that I did yesterday. So it's got the bicolor, some of the lemons, it's got the orange, it's got the, um, this is gold light old. Y'all, this is how your flowers should look when they get to your customer's house. You know, they should be um, further along like that, but you should not be selling them that way, right? So the Pro Cut Mix which you can find on the website, has all the colors and it just simplifies it. Because here's something else I want to share with you all. You know, this year I have been doing a lot of test growing of a lot of different sunflowers, um, not only because we people want more sunflowers. I mean, they're constantly asking us about all these other varieties we see people have. Um, so I grew two tons this year and I cannot tell you how complicated it is. And I'm saying that because for flower farmers, for seven years, I think during our high production years and even up until last year, I only grew Pro Cut Orange, one color, and I planted 1,200 seeds a week. 
So we had 1,200 stems a week of one color. And that is the most common color. That's the most requested color. And we sold out every week. What I learned was you don't have to grow a bunch of whole different colors when you're selling. I mean, we sold the florists and the supermarkets and we were making bouquets, da, 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 da. We didn't have to have diversity. The smaller you are, perhaps, if you're doing markets and that type of things and CSAs and bouquet um, drop-offs, you may need diversity. And I am here to say that those people that are trying to grow a bunch of different sunflowers that are losing their mind, that's how that is. That's why we don't do it. That's one of those smart flower farmer rules that you learn in flower farming school. Um, and I mean, so many things you don't even think about. For me, my commercial customers knew that I had a ton of orange sunflowers every week. They felt confident after a year or two of canceling all their sunflower stand in orders with other people. But if I had different colors all the time, they couldn't do that. Do you see what I'm saying? Stay with the boat. The boat is the orange sunflower. <laughs> if you are a grower that is trying to scale your business, the whole point of scaling a business is you have to do something that can be done over and over and over and over again. Systems um, and ways and something that you can teach somebody else to do so that you can go on to do something else to teach somebody else. Do you see what I'm getting at? Simplicity is the answer to a great business. It is so simple. Most people miss it. I talked that about that. Um, I used to always say that about organic gardening when I would do conferences. And that was one of the most popular talks that I would give is, you know, how do you have such perfect flowers um, and grow outside? You don't use pesticides, not even organic stuff. Friends, it is so simple. People miss it. That's what my book, Vegetables Love Flowers, is all about. How to grow a three season cutting garden and how... I maintain. And y'all, I'm on such a roll today. I made a podcast this morning and I'm on a big project I'm having to do content for. And I'm like, it's just spilling out of me. It is so, it is so simple. People today think everything has to be complicated to be good. And that if it doesn't give you instant gratification, it's not worth doing. And that's why, you know, I tell people all the time, people say, aren't there too many flower farmers? And I say, Y'all, I've gotten so gutsy about it. I just I have lost my filter, I think. No, there aren't too many flower. There are not enough flower farmers while we're still importing like five billion dollars of flowers a year from other countries. Did you hear that? Five billion with a B. Um, but there are a lot of people that on social media, it appears we have a lot of flower farmers. Those are people that haven't quite built their bridge yet. And a lot of them are on their way and that's my job to help them. That's what I love to do. Right. But it keeps some people from thinking, oh my gosh, they go over to a closed group that has 20,000 people in it. I will tell you that less than half a percent of that group is really selling and doing business because it takes time and it's hard and you have to show up and you have to get up and Brush your knees off and do it again the next day. You got to sow these seeds every Saturday. <laughs> um, so sorry, I went down a rabbit hole, y'all. Anyway, today we are sowing pro cut mixes because we want diversity for imaging. Because all I'm growing for now is showing um, for the show each week and for filming and videoing and um, imaging for projects I'm working on. So the first thing we always do is identify the tray. This is the garden marker that we just changed everything for me. This will let made to hold up in UV rays and moisture outside. If you're using a Sharpie, you're in for a rude awakening one day when you go out in about two weeks and all your words are gone. Um, what is today? 917. Um, the reason you have to identify them it's not a really big deal, especially if you start growing all the same ones, like I recommend. Um, but you need the date because when you get, think about me having 10 trays a week, because these trays are 128, 10 trays a week out there on the porch, you know, they get bumped out there as soon as they start cracking from the heat in there. Um, think about three weeks sitting out there. That's 30 trays. If you don't have dates on them, they get so mixed up and screwed up. You won't even believe it. So Masking tape is the tape of choice that we use. And this tray I got is not the best one. It's kind of falling apart. Um, 
So I always put the variety. I just, you know, and what the date is. And so you'll find that garden marker, um, P.S., excellent um, stock and stopper. Yesterday, that's what we, you know what yesterday was? A hundred days to Christmas. And I'm on it this year. I'm so excited about the holidays. I have been out of my game for, well, the last three years, all of us, right, because of COVID. But I used to, I mean, we love to be great gift givers. But in years, last few years, because I was so overwhelmed in flower farming, I didn't do it very well. I mean, I go out like three days before Christmas and buy everything in two hours because I'll have a list and just go in, shop, get it and be done. Um, I love enjoying the holidays over November and December, meaning shopping because um, I don't like to shop. Shopping, bringing it home, having the stuff where I wrap it right as soon as I bring it home and I have a bed that the presents are on. And it just makes the holidays last for two months and the love of giving. And anyway, I'm trying to do that yesterday. So yesterday on the show, we were talking about I bought three. I couldn't say over there, though, what it was because my sister was here. But we have three golden retrievers in the Gardener's Workshop family. I have Tucker. My sister has Penny and my niece, Kelly, who's our tech person website um, she leads um, our team of marketers and everybody. Um, she has a golden name, Lucy. So I got them three. I got them all three. What the same stuff toy, which is like keeps them from chewing it up. Anyway, sorry, y'all rabbit hole. So let's talk sunflowers for a minute. So here's the tray. This is a 128 plug tray. You can find these over on our website. You will not find these. I do not believe on the app yet. Um, you can find five pack of these over on the website. Um, and that means there's 128 holes. What's in here is just simply any random um, potting soil you can buy at your local nursery um, with no special ingredients, not, not really seed starting mix, but just any potting mix mixed 50-50 with finished compost. We just buy bags of finished compost at the store um, and mix them together. And then I just fill this tray up. And what we do to make it really quick, down and dirty, because that's what everything's about. Like, y'all, making it simple. That's how my Christmas present wrapping thing is, right? If you have your stuff, you can just do it and be done. It doesn't take you but a minute. What Bobo does is we have these big square tubs out on the carport. Um, they have tops. And she will bring, you know, I'll get several bags of potting soil and several, an equal amount of compost. I'll bring them home. She just, I buy enough to fit in that big tub, which I think is two bags of each. And as she brings them home, just dumps them in, mixes it all up. And that tub is big enough that I can just open it up, put my tray on top of the soil, and then just shovel the soil on top of it with my hands. Because then I can just clean the top off. It's in the tub. You don't spill it. You don't make a mess. A mess. And if you'll notice how clean my tray is, because y'all, soil is expensive. Why well, have a bunch of excess here that when you water, it runs off and you waste it, right? So um, we that's how I fill my tray. It doesn't take me but a nanosecond, literally, to fill my tray. And when you're doing, you know, 10 or three or even just one, it's just that all that saves time. So if you'll remember a few weeks back, I had to make my own pro cut mix because I didn't have any here at the farm. So I mixed all of the solid colors together. So that's what I've got here. Um, but you will find the pro cut mix over on the gardenersworkshop.com as well as all the individual colors too. And the seeds to all those flowers behind me mostly. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to drop one seed onto the surface of each one of these blocks. Sunflower seeds benefit from heat and from being covered. And what that means when we say covered, that means covered with soil that creates darkness as well as it helps the seed, which, you know, it's a big old hard seed. Um, being under soil helps it to uh, let that seed husk get all well hydrated and for um, the sprout to just shuck that off really easily. So I'm just simply dropping one on the top of each. And um, what is going to happen next is I'm going to push them down 
And then I'll talk about that actually when I'm doing it. After we get them all planted here, um, after the show, I take them into my grow room. My grow room is just a 10 by 10 room um, that's got racks and grow lights and a table that's got my seedling heat mat on it. I will pop this tray onto the seedling heat mat because sunflowers like it really warm and hot. And that's what makes them sprout quickly and sprout super strong roots. If you're having trouble with your sunflowers, when you pull on the stem at the appropriate time, which is about when they're two to three weeks old, the stem doesn't seem like it has much root matter below that's holding it attached. That usually is from a lack of heat and doing the heat immediately um, just gets the sunflowers going really, really quickly. Um, and then once they pop, you can do one of two things. You can pop them outside in full blasting sun all day. And then um, plant them when they're two to three weeks old. But what you can do if you want and you fight varmints like we do, you can take them off the ceiling heat mat and just put them under grow lights if you have room. We have no room at this point because we have so many cool flowers going um, and grow them under your grow lights. We plant them. Our goal is to plant them out in the garden when they're two to three weeks old. We find two and a half weeks is about perfect for us. We know when we pull on the stem and the, the whole cell just comes right out easily. You do not want to be fighting these. You do not want to be digging these out. Um, then we take them out to the garden and plant them. So after you saw me just push them down, now if you look down in those cells, you can still see the seeds. But when I take them into the grow room, put it on the floor, use a watering can with a sprinkler head on it and water this really well. I go over it at least twice. That's going to wash the soil down from the walls of the cell and that's going to finish covering the seed up. You do not need to waste time putting more soil on top or doing any additional steps. Again, friends, if you want to really become a flower farmer, you have to find the most efficient way to do everything and to communicate that also to your team. Um, because I will tell you that when you let jobs go to somebody else in your organization, perhaps, and you don't witness or see them doing it for a while, you come back and they've like added six steps. It's taken them so much longer. And so that's something that you have to keep your eye on. I learned that from... Um, one of the conferences that I attended um, years ago, and it was by a, um, a retired vegetable farmer that had employed for 35 years. He and his wife were very successful vegetable farmers and all of their workforce was college students. What that means is every year they had new people. That's tough. But he had perfected the system. And he said that even people that work for you for a long time need it. And I really learned from him about following up with your employees and how to support them. And anyway, so all these little steps I'm telling you is exactly what I tell my people. Um, and because you want to stream, time is money, friends. I mean, this is for us, not a hobby. This is a business. And so you don't need to be doing any extra steps. So I'll water them, pop them on the heat mat in usually 24 to 36 hours because they're on heat. They pop and then I'll pop them outside. I do have to give them varmint control, meaning rabbits and birds will just very easily come and eat them gone or the birds will peck them. Um, and so we'll use row cover or build a little fence around them with bulb crates or it just depends on who's out there messing with them. Um, so then what's going to happen is hang on. Um, then what will happen is once they're two and a half to three weeks old, we pull on them, they come out easily. Bobo will take them out and plant them. And so uh, we prepare the beds by using the dry organic fertilizer, which is a dry, it's a processed chicken litter based organic certified um fertilizer. We apply it according to directions. You can read all about it on our website, we sell it. So you can see what it is and how we use it and what the directions are. Um, and then we prepare it, incorporate the fertilizer into the soil and then Bobo plants. She uses the um, flower support netting 
as a planting grid. She puts it down for planting and then it's immediately removed. You never leave it down. Um, and we put five rows of sunflowers in a 30 inch wide bed. And that gives us that perfect size sunflower like you see behind me, they're about this big. And that is the size that you want for bouquet making. That's what your cust commercial customers will love. This time of the year, as the day length is shorter, um, they definitely get smaller. And we talked last week, I think I talked about interruption light. You can go back and watch that. This is November's, I'm sorry, November, I'm already lost. September 17th. So last week's on the 10th, um, I talked about interruption light and how that can make your, your blooms bigger, even on short days. Um, and she plants them. We hand, she plants, she rolls up the planting grid, flower support netting, um, and then she waters by hand with a wand. Because we get so much water here in southeastern Virginia, um, I typically do not install irrigation. And because these sunflowers are already um, a, way, a third of the way through their life, so if they're zero to 60 days is seed to bloom. So when you plant them at about 20 days old, they're already a third of the way through. So we don't feel like it's necessary to put down the Bio360, which is the film that looks like plastic, does everything plastic does, except that it breaks down and you can incorporate it into your soil. It's a cornmeal byproduct. I've used it for about 10, I guess 10 or 12 years by now. Um, totally love that stuff, but it's not necessary for sunflowers. Um, and so we plant them water them and then those sunflowers are pretty much on their own they do benefit for sure from um, flower support netting but because we plant so many so often we do not support them we just take a calculated risk and are willing to lose some and we do lose some um, and you have to decide for yourself. If you're a small grower or a home gardener, I 100% recommend netting them because you don't have very many. And if one rainstorm can just lay them all down, that would be a really big loss. So definitely um, recommend that. The other thing that I haven't mentioned for a while is planting the same variety and color each week keeps you on a perfect schedule. That's why planting all 1,200 oranges every single week, we always had sunflowers. And that gave me the confidence after doing it for several years to do the standing order with my florist. You know, I had two or three florists that took 10 to 15 bunches. That's 100 to 150 stems a week per florist. In addition to we were making 250 mixed bouquets each week for supermarkets, plus our members only market, plus our bouquet subscription, plus straight bunches for the supermarkets. We moved a lot of flowers, friends. And you can do that once you get your simple system down. Um, and I will tell you that um, flower farm, my flower farm in school course, we have three flower farming courses in that series. There's mine, which is the basics. Basics is annuals, marketing, and more. Then there's Dave's, which is bulbs, perennials, woodies, and shrubs. I'm sorry, woodies and more, which doesn't, that only registers in summer. That class just finished. And then we have growing cut flower crops in hoop and greenhouses, which is Gretel and Steve. And then we have Jenny Love's Farmer Florist, the wedding process. That's not about doing making the bouquets and all that mess. Y'all, this is the behind the scenes um, business part of it. Not only does she show contracts and how to figure out pricing, what you should grow and what you should buy from other farmers and not grow yourself. Marketing, I mean, y'all, our courses are how to do it. It is not the fluff of seeing a bunch of gorgeousness while there are beautiful pictures in them and some videos. It is about the steps to actually do all of this stuff and be successful because, you know, as I said earlier today, I did a podcast, you know, becoming an entrepreneur is pretty boring at times. It is hard and it is lonely, but that's what it takes because the reward is really, really high. Right. Um, and sunflowers are what feathered my nest. I will tell you that. Um, so Y'all can check that out. All right. So I'm going to circle back around to the questions. 
And thank you all so much for all of y'all showing. So again, if you're seeing in the comments, all of those um, sunflower emoji, those are people that are identifying themselves as our course students. And thank you so much. And if you want to know about our courses, who better to ask than the people that have taken them? Are y'all seeing this beautiful white buttercream marigolds in the background? Oh my gosh. I contend now after growing them incredibly successful for the second year um, that they change fall. Do you see the orange and yellow marigolds right next to them back there? If those creamy white were not next to them, they'd be so bold. That buttercream color softens everything. And are you seeing all those? You, If you watch the replay of yesterday's live show, you see all those up close and personal. And friends, I'm telling you, I grow 14 different Cosmos now. I have really tweaked them into my mix and they're amazing and customers absolutely love them. Um, but I'm just sitting here looking at those, that's white swan. And you'll find that seed over in the app too. Um, the problem with white swan is it has no fragrance, which is what makes me happy. But guess what that creates? Rabbits eat them. You have to really do rabbit control like we've never had to do before. But they're worth whatever you have to do to take care of the rabbit problem. All right. So hello, everybody. I see Texas. My very first question is free shipping to Canada. Dorothy, if we shipped to Canada, we could probably do that, but we are not able to ship to Canada. People, um, we constantly investigate, reinvestigate shipping to Canada. And it is um, so incredibly expensive and a lot of people lose their shipments and it is just so much more complicated. We are, that is at the top of our bucket list to someday, if we ever got a distribution center in Canada, y'all will be the first ones to learn about it. But to ship from here to into Canada, there are so many nightmare problems and cost and so incredibly expensive. Um, we are just, we're just a small business. I mean, really small compared to the, you know, big guys. And we wish we could. So unfortunately, we do ship to in the all 50 of the United States, but we cannot do international shipping at this point in time. But it is on our radar for the day that we actually can. Hello, Texas. Good morning, everybody. And thank you so much for putting your emojis. What's Virginia saying here? I've taken several of Lisa's classes and Dave's class. Totally worth the money. Every class I take gains so much knowledge. Oh, Virginia, thank you so much for sharing that. And you know what a lot of people don't understand is that we continue um, after our courses are introduced to add. Like, for instance, I will say this here. My course, The Basics, one of the things we added last year is we have created this amazing tool. It's called the Cool Flower Field Growers Report. And it is an interactive tool where everybody has access to read it, but people can also input information like, hey, I live in zone six and I grew Bells of Ireland out in the field and they did great because that's one zone cooler than what we knew that it would grow. And it's immediately populated in this tool. That means that you can go in, it's like like TJ Maxx, y'all, you know, that favorite discount store for all of us. You never know what you're going to find there. What's there today? There may be more there tomorrow. So that is only available to inside my course to my students. Those are the kinds of things we just love adding and beefing up our courses. And um, so I'm just saying it's pretty amazing. All right. Let's see what Susan's asking. Lisa, when do you plant sweet pea seeds in the garden? I live in zone 8A in North Texas. Right now, it's still warm. So first off, we start sweet peas indoors in the two-inch blocker. And um, I kind of have a new way of doing sweet peas now based on my experience with um, Farmer Bailey. Um, and he actually has really helped me with that. So normally, I would have I still started them in the two-inch blocker, and I still do. Um, but sweet peas really like it cooler than we imagined for germination. We used to start them indoors on the two inch block. We'd put them on the heat mat for like 24 hours. They would pop and then we'd put them under grow lights. Bailey's way of starting them is not in the soil blocker. He does it in a pot, but 
he germinates his sweet peas in a 55 degree greenhouse. He lives in Vermont, so that's pretty easy to achieve, right? So what I've done for the last two years is two inch block, sow my seeds, and we put them out on the carport. And I don't start them till about, instead of the six to eight week window, like is all cool flowers, I wait till about three to four weeks before my last frost. And I watch the weather. App. You know, I'm like watching the two week weather, nighttime temperatures. I'm looking for the 55 degree nighttime temperatures. And that's when I sow my sweet peas and I'm sowing them outdoors, keeping them watered out of out of direct sunlight, just kind of letting them sit over there on their own. And I will tell you that two years in a row, we've had 100 percent germination um, and Bailey was so very, very right. So wait until it's cool. You have to tweak everything to your conditions. Um, and so it's based on your first frost date and then on your intuition about that. Hope that helps, Susan. Leah, so you stagger fall starts and then you have a staggered harvest come spring. Um, we don't really stagger the fall planting. I know that's very confusing. First off, when you plant in the fall, no matter how you stagger it, they all kind of come out the same on the other end of it. It's really more about, for instance, to confuse this even further, um, for instance, snapdragons. Snapdragons, there's so many different varieties of snapdragons, and there's different groups within snapdragons. There's group one, two, three, and four. And those groups are grouped by how much day length. They are triggered by day length meaning snapdragon group one and two will bloom when the days are short, which means that they bloom in really early spring. It really doesn't matter when you plant them. They're going to bloom in early spring. That's why if you plant that particular variety of snapdragon in spring, they're going to bloom really short. Is it coming clear to y'all now? If you plant the group three and four, which are for longer days, those plants will grow more before they actually bloom. But put all that aside. And there's, by the way, there's a great um, podcast that Dave Dowling and I did on this all about snapdragons that you need to go listen to. But when you plant all, I plant everything in the fall. We stagger it so that when we do go to start planting, all the plants are big enough size. Like how I started that Rebecca earlier, they're going to all be planted usually within a couple weeks of each other, all the cool flowers, but they needed to be start earlier so that they're big enough to be planted when that time comes. But I plant all the different groups of snapdragons and even more, right? In the fall. When we when they bloom come spring, they're going to fall out blooming based on their day length requirement. So, for instance, Chantilly and I think it's, um, see, I can't do anything by memory, y'all. I think it's Madam Butterfly, but I'm not sure. Chantilly for sure. Chantilly is a short day snap. So, they will, they will be blooming for us super early but they're blooming super tall because they were fall planted and they're well established. And so my snapdragons, because I bloom, I plant all the different varieties you'll see on our website, as well as our special custom mixes called the dragons in the different shades. They were all planted in the fall, but they go into spring and early summer all well established. So when their day length arrives, they hit the ground running. Does that make sense? I hope. Um, but all the rest of them, not everybody has those different groups. You know, Rudbeckia is Rudbeckia. Um, Feverfew is Feverfew. All the Feverfews, no matter when we plant them, seem to bloom at the same time, um, unless you plant them later in spring. Um, so we start the plant based on a estimated planting time and then back however many weeks it takes us to get that transplant. If that doesn't confuse you enough, you're confused even more now. But I um, don't do it. There's no staggering in the fall. Lisa, 1,200 seeds a week, 1,200 stems a week and sold out. This is the plan I will follow. <laughs> but you want to know, Lisa, why, why everybody doesn't follow this plan? Because they fall in. 
they they see all the shiny objects beyond the basic. I have been growing the basic same annuals with a few extra new colors, maybe a few different varieties for 25 years, selling the same stuff over and over. People see those shiny objects. What are shiny objects? Uh, tulips, anemones, ranunculus, all which are beautiful, which once you graduate, y'all, from being a beginner farmer, which I estimate is usually about three to five years, and you have a list of customers and you have enough knowledge to be able to know how to farm, people get lost in that and spend tons of money. And guess what? I'm just over here selling 1,200 sunflowers wholesale for over $1,500 a week for 26 weeks. You can do that math. Um, that, I mean, how much do ranunculus and tulips bulbs cost shipping? Then they have to be planted. Then you pray you have customers to sell them to and that you did it right. And that, you know, I mean, I mean, how many people, so there's people, I see them all over social media right now talking about buying lots of tulips from retail companies, not wholesale houses. You should not be, I don't even care if they're on sale in the big box store and you think they're a deal. They're crummy quality, y'all. They are dehydrated. They are it is still cheaper to buy from a wholesale source that you get better quality, bigger bulbs, more bigger flowers, better quality. It's that's the rabbit hole that people fall down. I mean, it'll be all over. I don't even read them anymore because I can't hardly stand to not say to people on a DM, do not buy 2000 tulips from a retail source. Holy you can't make money doing that. Anyway, so sunflowers are just one of the examples of how people think it can't quash possibly be that simple. Simple? Yes. Hard work? Yes. Do you have to show up every day? Yes. And I think that's why people are so surprised when they take my course. It's like the black and white version of doing it. It's not, we see some of that too. That's the end when you do all the black and white stuff, meaning clear. Question. How did you follow the great simple plan with fall planting? Cool, hardy, cool flowers. The simple plan is to plan ahead. I mean, so many people, because they're getting all caught up in all those things I just talked about, those fall planted bulbs and all that mess, is when I am planning my garden, and I'm not a very good planner, y'all. I will confess that right now. But when we start planting and planning our first spring planting of warm season tender annuals, and then I plant, it depends on how big of my business is, what year we're talking about. When we were high production, shoot, I'd have eight successions of warm season annuals. That doesn't count sunflowers. That's just eight of what you see behind me over and over and over again for incredible volume and quality. People that aren't growing and having, you know, selling 15,000 stems a week doesn't need to do that. Three or four successions. But in my mind, when I'm thinking about all of that for spring and summer, I'm already thinking, where am I putting my fall planted cool flowers? Because think about it. You want to have a block of beds or a block of spot, depending on how big you are, available that you can rip out. That's what we're getting ready to do right here. I'm getting ready. I'm, this afternoon, I'm going to walk the farm and I'm making a list of all the crops that Bobo needs to start pulling because it's just the two of us now, right? Um, and so there's not, I mean, we'll, we'll knock it out in two days, three days, um, and we'll get all the crops pulled out so that we can make way and start putting down organic fertilizer, maybe a little compost and prepare the beds for cool flowers. And so they can all be grouped together, making way for planting the cool season, hardy annuals, having a spot, starting your transplants. It, you don't have to be exactly on time, but this is the most important crop of the year, y'all. It is spring. This is the highest demand. This stuff is going to bloom before all that other mess that you're wasting all your money on. You know, those would be the icing on the cake once you're an established flower farmer. 
but most people don't ever get there. And I will tell you that. I mean, I'd be willing to say half a percent of the people that start finish. Like I will finish, retire in 25, 30 years after I started, right? So I don't know if that answers you, but that's my great simple plan. Then I plan all my direct seated beds together and all the transplanted beds together. Then if there's flash crops, I try to, in every, and don't ask me what, what the flash crops are because what's a flash crop for me is not a flash crop for people in New England. That's something you really have to figure out for your growing conditions. Um, all right, y'all, we got to move on. Good morning, Texas. Hi, Lisa. Nice to catch you live. What size was your first year flower bed? So do you mean flower farming or flower gardening? I will tell you that um, for a home gardener, nobody needs more than two 12 to 16 foot beds. I'm working on a big plan for that and they're 16 feet and it's a ton of blooming flowers. When I, my first commercial garden had, let's see, five, five beds probably that were probably like maybe 50 or 60 feet long. And I mean, it was more than I could handle. I mean, while you're trying to figure out what to do about the pathways that you need to keep clean and clear or mowed or whatever you're doing, keep the beds weed free by prevention, keep the beds harvested all the while, while you're starting seeds, all the while, while you're harvesting flowers, you're selling flowers, you're delivering flowers, you're marketing flowers, you know, it is a huge bite. You can only eat this elephant one little small bite at a time. And I tell people, if you think you need a quarter acre, I'd do half of that. Um, you would be better to have a waiting line of customers than to be staring at buckets of flowers not sold or worse yet, you just can't get ahead of the weeds and they take you down. Um, I am all about, I mean, morale is all it's what it's about. Hello from Elizabeth City. Hello, Sally. Hello, everybody. Oh, wait, here we go. Lisa, please say again what type of tub you use to mix the soil. I have been making a mess, as you said. Thanks. Can't find the sunflower emoji. All right. So there's two different kinds of soils we mix on this farm. There's soil blocking mix, which we do in like um, we make our ingredients, which you can watch, I think, three or four weeks back on um, a video here on YouTube to see me doing that. We make we prepare those ingredients and then we mix in like basically like a kitty litter box size to make our blocks in after we mix it. But the sunflower planting mix, those big boxes that you see like at the big box stores, they're about is they're probably, I'm going to guess, 16 inches wide, probably 24 to 36 inches long. They're black on the bottom, they have big yellow top. You'll find them in like the home goods, not home goods, like the big lumber stores, you know, those places. Um, and they have a top on them and your tray will just sit right down and sit on top of the pile of soil that's already been mixed and you put it in there. So hopefully that helps, right? All right. Nevada 7B question. I have indoor sown snapdragons and fever few. They are three weeks old and looking great. When do I introduce to the outdoors and then plant outdoor? Well, um, your zone only tells you that, yes, you can fall plant them. Your first expected frost date is what tells you the best time to plant them. The point is that you get your transplants in the ground about four to eight weeks before that frost date. So your transplants have time to get established before your cold temperatures come. Um, so definitely you can move them. If they're, you know, I'm looking for a three to five inch plant to plant out. If yours are already two to three inches and they're looking good, you can move them out to a protected area and go through that whole process. Um, and then after a week or so, if you're getting to close to when you're supposed to be planting them, plant them out in your garden. Um, but yeah, that is, that's awesome. Glad you got your sweat and snapdragons and sweet peas. So not sweet peas, fever few. So I'll say that again, y'all, your, your winter hardiness zone only tells you what you 
can plant in the fall. You look at what is your hardiness zone. Hers is 7B. That means any cool season hardy annual that says it's winter hardy to zone 7, you can plant all of those and lower, meaning zone 7 and 8 and 9, can all be planted. I'm sorry, that's backwards. 7, 6, and 5, you can plant in fall. That means they're winter hardy. They'll survive winter for you. Um, and that's pretty, once you get it, you'll figure that all out. All right, so let's see. Oh, here's somebody just coming in late. They're going to watch the replay. Let's see if this is. Hi, Lisa. It's going to get into the 80s next week. I'm worried the sun's going to fry my cool season, hardy annuals in the bio. Do I need to shade my cloth? Yeah, it's probably not a bad idea. I don't know if you ordered, if you wore, if you planted too early or if it's just crazy weather, which is what we're all experiencing, right? Um, so to make that half moon row cover with hoops, making the cover up on the sun, uh, the afternoon sun side so that it creates shade, but don't close the tunnels because you'll toast them and just be sure they're well watered. Um, but yeah, that can be a problem for sure. Do your sweet peas survive summer heat? So Susan, the point of fall planting, so I'm in zone 7B8A. Um, sweet peas are winter hardy, we know, in zone 7, 8, and 9, which means everybody can fall plant them. Um, they start blooming for us about, mid they miss Mother's Day. They start blooming in mid-May. We still have them. If you keep them, you got to keep them cut. Sweet peas almost have to be cut every single day. When you fall plant them, they grow like blooming weeds. Most people stop harvesting them, and that starts their decline. But when you um, harvest them just about every day, um, they will continue to bloom. What takes sweet peas out is they fall victim to disease, disease and pests, and that's because they get stressed because of the heat. Struggling plants attract bugs and disease. We know that is a fact, right? So that will happen to them, but it totally depends on what kind of summer I'm having. If they're kept well watered and it doesn't go up to super high, we can keep, keep cutting them. But normally we have sweet peas till about the end of June. By then we're done. We're tired of cutting them. Our customers have had their fill of them. They're ready to move on to zinnias and coxcomb. That's the seasonality of gardening. And that's something else that I think people miss. And I really try to nail home, to drive home in flower farming school. I am a field grown commercial flower farmer. What that means is I want to make my crops as best as they can be for as long as possible. That doesn't mean stretching sweet peas into July where I'm fighting disease and pests. That's too much work and it's not very successful. When sweet peas are done, we're done. We pull them out and move on to the next crop. And then the next, so then our customers are like chomping for the best zinnias and coxcomb and lisianthus is around the corner and um, sweet smelling basil for their bouquets and all, you know what I mean? So getting that ebb and flow, and then this is what they're ready for fall. Look up there. Look at that maroon foliage of mahogany splendor. Marigolds, tons of sunflowers. There's eucalyptus over there to die for, four different kinds. We still have basil. We have great grasses, Indian, uh, not Indian summer, um, lost, purple majesty, um, and all the cosmos. I mean, cosmos, that apricotta is what that is right there. You can find all those seeds over on my website. Um, and they are just, you know, cosmos turn the party up when days start getting short, like dahlias do. Dahlias, which I don't grow. Dahlias, I can grow. I did grow them for many years, but guess what? I can make more money selling other things that are easier to grow. And dahlias, our pest pressure is so unbelievable here all summer. It just, it's really, really hard and they demand a lot of water. And those are things that I just, I can sell the heck out of dahlias, but I can sell more other things that take less care. It just depends on what your market is, friends. If I was selling to event people, then I might have to grow dahlias but I didn't sell to, I sold to florists that sell flowers every day of their life. Those are my main customers. I want somebody that's doing flowers, not special events, people that are doing tons of, believe it or not, casket covers and everyday arrangements every single day. And they want top quality, long lasting local flowers. And that's what I provided. It's simple. 
but it's not for everybody. Some people just want to grow dahlias, ranunculus, and anemones. I totally get it. And tulips, go for it. You know, that wasn't my niche. And, um, you know, it was big business. So embracing seasonality. Roseanne, Rosalind Miller, I'm growing in the same zone as you. First year farmer, congratulations. My cool flower seedlings are struggling despite following all the rules. Are there local growers who can help me identify the mistakes that I've made? Well, I mean, that's probably one of the biggest unthought of benefits of taking professional courses is that you then become a member of a community of other people just like you. It is totally non-judgmental and 100% helping you and your instructors are in there even after your course is over, like in my alumni group. Um, oftentimes, you know, I dip in there about once a week. Oftentimes, before I can even answer a student's question like what you've just posted, other students have come to the rescue because we need more information. We need to know just because you're in the same zone as me, there's people in my zone that their frost dates are two weeks earlier or two weeks after mine. Um, so you have to have more information to be able to figure that out. But that can be from puny seedlings to poor conditions, poor soil, too hot. You planted at the wrong time. Um, you know what I mean? So there's just so much and you need a lot of support. And that's one of the things that we have heard from our students that they benefit the most. I mean, we have students from my um, beta class, which was in 2018, that are still in the alumni and they're helping other people. So it's pretty amazing. So there are a lot of things that can cause your struggle. Do you plan on having another open garden? I came on the wrong day last year. Oh, Betty, I'm so sorry. Um, at this point in time, no, just because we have a lot of parking problems with my neighborhood. But if we ever do it again, y'all be the first to know. I mean, we're looking at doing special things like we have to reduce the number of people. Like, for instance, everybody that's taken flower farming school or something like that, that just narrows the field. Um, but we, there's no, nothing on the books at this point in time. Dana, what is your cutoff date for getting cool flowers in the ground in the fall? I know you do this by your first frost date. Mine is similar in 7B, 8A. So really there, for me, I can truly plant all winter if I wanted to. I can continue to plant transplants. The direct seeding, different story. Um, they have to be more timely because you need the heat of the day to get them to sprout. But I have planted some of the best sweet William I've ever grown in January. Um, if the ground is not frozen, but the goal. And again, Dana, it's all about it's like if we have one of those winters where it gets deep cold and stays cold all winter, that's tough. But these last few years, we've had these, you know, fluctuating temperatures. So that's allowed me to do it. Um, so I don't really have a cutoff date. Um, like, for instance, if we and this is how I planted that sweet William that was so awesome. Um, we discovered that three of the major colors back when we were in high production didn't get started. They didn't get I didn't put them on the list and Bobo didn't start them. And we didn't realize it until we were planting it. It's like, where's the rose and the purple Amazon? It's like we didn't have any. Well, those are huge cash crops for us. So I said, well, shoot. It was like uh, the middle of October when we discovered that we started them. Then Christmas came and we didn't get them planted till January. And they were awesome. And we now succession plant in January and February and March because of that. So I, I know that doesn't help you a whole lot. You just, as long as the ground is workable and the beds are prepared, that's the key. If you're going to plant through winter and you don't have frozen, you know, you're in a where you can do that. You have to prepare, prepare all the beds in fall and then just have them sitting out there ready and waiting. That gives you more options. Leah, thanks. Makes sense now. Glad to hear that. Lisa, I must resist the shiny objects. I want a success working alone, starting small, growing with cash only, no debt. I had, I had picks their tools, but I know reality, you know, so she's, you know, that's another thing that I tell people. I mean, I tell you this in the course, 
If you don't have a thousand dollars to start your business with, you need to get a side hustle. You need to work somewhere, you know, for the holidays and get that cash or sell something. You need to have the cash to start. There's no reason to go into debt. No reason whatsoever. And my method of madness, because I'm I have a pretty I'm pretty weak at resistance stuff. Do not look at the tulip catalogs. Do not. I don't go to the store the store to go shopping unless I have money to spend because it's hard to not buy. So you have to just really pull up your big girl pants as you did and realize you're not going to do that. But for me, it's hard to resist. Kelly, Kelsey, Hey Lisa, I can't wait to see your shopping show with all of the cool flowers. So funny you should say that. So the whole point of this shopping show, the reason it started was so I could show the harvest. But when you're seeing the harvest and that's when you need to buy the seeds to put in your seed vault, you're not seeing the stuff that you need to start right then. And your point is exactly it. When I start having cool flowers in early spring or in spring, you're going to be able to see them, but it's too late to plant them then. So it's like you have to get in what I tell people often. It's like you have to realize, you know how there's bikinis in the retail stores in January long before we all need them? Well, the retailers have figured out that people want to buy them when they see them and then they'll have them when they need them. That's the mentality we need to get on with seeds. All this stuff behind me, it's too late to plant these seeds, but you need to buy the seeds when you see them. That's why so often I make it free seed packet shipping for that weekend of the app shopping. So you can get the seeds, like you can order seeds every single week. And let me just tell you, there are people doing that. There are people that order four times in a weekend because they come back and look again. Um, and that's why we are doing that. So I can't wait for cool flowers too, because we've only been doing the app. I think the end of cool flowers because it was like the snapdragons were still going when we started. It'll be fun. Facebook user best way to have flowers for Easter and mother's day is to plant cool flowers. Amen. So how to best cover them using caterpillar tunnels. I don't know how to protect them from high winds and snow. You can't protect them with low tunnels and snow, at least not the ones that I use. We do not use plastic. I use low tunnels, not what are technically caterpillar tunnels. Um, and I don't teach how to do that when snow comes. If you're trying to get blooms with cool flowers for Mother's Day, cool flowers will take, if you're growing what's winter hardy in your zone, they will take snow during when it's supposed to snow normally. I mean, as long as they don't have buds on them, they'll take snow covers down whenever snow or frozen ice is coming. Um, and we use Lowe's tunnels. And that is something we talk about in the course as well. Um, and I talk about why I don't use plastic. That is a whole nother ballpark um, of growing. And we don't find it necessary. And um, that's not really the cool flower concept. Um, the cool flower concept is growing in your conditions and planting at the appropriate time for your conditions to be able to embrace seasonality. Does that make sense? Facebook user, can I still cover crop? Um, 7A, again, it's about your date, but we recommend, particularly for people that Cover crop is really difficult to bring into your rotation. Not everybody has to cover crop. I mean, I recommend getting a handle on farming before you start bringing in a lot of cover cropping. But for cool season hardy annual, like planting in the fall to winter over, I recommend crimson clover. You can find it on our website um, as well as the inoculant that goes with it. And you can read more about that. It is winter hardy to a negative 10 degrees. That means if it doesn't go below 10 below zero in your winters. You can winter plant it. The goal is to get it in the ground on the ground six to eight weeks before your first expected frost so it can germinate and grow into a little plant so it protects your soil and provides habitat. That's the whole point of it. So you'll have to judge from that. 
Fall planted cool flowers. Did you say 25 or 8 varieties? So you ended, so you end up with loads and loads of those to really faithfully deliver your covers customers over and over. That was florists need one. So I think you might be talking about snapdragons. I don't know. Did you say 25? You have to have volume to, to really be able to supply commercial customers. You are better off to grow more volume of fewer things, but you still have to have a variety of stuff. But instead of growing 25 different flowers of a little bit, you're better off definitely to grow 10 to 15 different things at any given moment with more volume of it. That is so much easier for your commercial customers to buy from you and to figure you out and for you to actually sell. Um, so y'all, it's time to go. I'm going to take this one last question. And it's only because I just looked at this yesterday. Is frosted explosion a cut and come again? Mine got kind of brown, pretty hot here in North Florida. So frosted explosion is a grass and it is one of our favorites. Um, and it does come and cut it. I mean, you have, but you have to constantly keep it cut it. I think cut it, cut. One of the things that really throws a lot of people off is they overplant a particular crop and then they don't cut it clean. The first time you do not cut a crop clean. And when I say clean, I mean cut every stem that is at its point, at its stage to be cut. If there's something wrong with that stem, let's just say a bug bit it and it's not going to be good, you still have to cut it. You just trash it on the pathway instead of putting it in your bucket. The first time you don't do that, then your your plant, your garden start, that crop will start to decline. And then all of a sudden you have old flowers to pick through. My, my experience is with explosion in one, if like this current time now that we're doing what we're doing for this here, I only plant about five feet of individual crops most often in a succession so that we can cut that bed clean every time. And that'll give us a nice big bucket of that. If we start leaving those old ones in there, then it declines. So yes, it is a come and cut again, cut and come again, but you have to treat it that way to make that happen. And that is for all branching um, crops. All right, y'all, I got to get off here. It's quarter after. Um, so friends, first off, remember, go over and get the app, Gardener's Workshop Live Shop. Download it to your phone. You can watch the replays. If you watch yesterday's show, which would have been September 16th, all of those specials will still be available for you to buy from until Sunday morning, which will be September 18th at 8 a.m. Eastern time. And we have a special on, there's a soul blocking set special. There's some bundle products. My four favorite, four tools that I use constantly are bundled together for a savings, I think of like almost 20%. And there's just a ton of stuff over there. And there's products there that you won't find over on our website. And we have, wait till you see what's coming next week. Holy cow. We're bringing a product. And you know what I've done? This new thing that I'm giving, that will, will be introduced in next week, um, especially for anybody that's over 50. And I'm 60. I'll be, am I 61? I am 61. Anybody that has bad knees needs this. When it came in, the team, so the crew at the warehouse is about seven people, Right. Um, and then we have people here at the farm and then I have virtual workers. We have a team of about 14 people. And when this came in, you know, they didn't know what Suzanne and I had ordered. Everybody was like, oh, my gosh, I've got to get one of those. And so we're having this special field day here on the farm to get all of the staff to come here to help us plant because we need so much help. It's just me and Boba. And I told that I said yeah, everybody that's coming on that day and helps us. I mean, it's a paid work day. But I'm given one of those for everybody. And the team went nuts. And so wait till you have. So you got to tune in on um, what would that be? The 16th. 16th plus seven is the 23rd. You got to tune in because we're introducing it. I know we're going to sell out immediately. 
um, of it, but they're awesome. And we can't wait to, um, we were going to introduce them this week, but has to have a special shipping box and it is a little additional shipping. It's not free shipping by any stretch of the imagination. Um, anyway, got to get off here, friends. Thank you for joining me. Um, if you're a student, thank you so much for being willing to share your opinion with other people, to speak out about that on social media. My registration is October 1st through 5th. And um, I would love to have you join me in Flower Farming School and I'm totally stoked over it. I'm really getting excited now. I've been planning my social media stuff and um, it's really a lot of fun. Even though our marketing team does a lot, tells me what to do. I love coming up with my own stuff and um, I did a fun podcast this morning. Y'all, I no longer have a filter. I am like telling it like it is because I believe people want to hear the truth, not the fluffy, right? So, all right, friends, till we meet again, get the app, join me on Fridays at 12 noon Eastern time or catch the replay through the weekend and take advantage of those special sales. And please like and share this and subscribe. All right, folks. Till we meet again. Ciao.